That was fast, man. We just got through that course in nine videos. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, welcome back, everyone. I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And yes, we are now done with the Swift UI Map app. Hope you guys enjoyed the course. Uh, in this video, we're basically going to review everything that we created. We're going to go through all of our code, our MVVM architecture, uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, how you guys can add more locations to the app if you want. So a lot of fun here, pretty much just a review. We're not going to write any code. So sit back, relax. You guys did it. You guys did a great job. Uh, and don't forget to leave a like and comment if you enjoyed this course. So thank you guys for watching and let's take one last look at what we built. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everyone. This is the last video in this map app course. And in this video, we are not doing any coding as promised. Instead, we're just going to take a look at the app that we built, go over a little bit of the code here. All right, so I'm going to open up the app. And my app is in dark mode. I think the dark mode looks better. It doesn't really matter if you're in light or dark mode. So firstly, first and foremost, we have this awesome map in the background. And if we look at the locations view here, and if we go up to the map section, so we have our map layer here, uh, we can see that this map is pretty complex, honestly, because we have this coordinate region, which we are binding to a map region. So this way, if we change the region in our view model, uh, the map is automatically updating. And we can see that when we click from item to item to item. We also have on this map, annotation items, right? We have custom annotation items. And then for each of those items, we added not a regular map pin, but a custom location map annotation view. And that's why we get these really cool, uh, this like red map indicator here. And we could have customized that however we wanted, but we have this nice themed pin for our app, which I think looks really good. And what was really cool on that feature, we added a tap gesture onto it so that we can literally tap on other pins on our map and it will go straight to those pins, which is a great UI. And you can see that when we click on these pins, the bottom is animating, the top title is changing, the map is moving, the pin itself is animating larger. And I think it's really just an overall great UI here. On the top, we also have this list that pops down. So if we look at our, uh, our header section here, we have this awesome, very simple if statement. So if we want to show the list, we added the list view. So it was really that easy to get this really cool animation for this list to come in here. And what I like about this list is that it's a list, right? So it's actually in the locations list view, it's actually a list. And that means that each item has this little divider in between. And it also means that it's scrollable. So if we wanted to, and you probably will want to if you just built this app, we can add a whole bunch more locations to this list and it will just be scrollable. So we'll just be adding items down here and this whole list section is not gonna extend, but rather uh, this will just be scrollable in here like this. So this list is pretty dynamic if we wanna add more locations. It's not limited to this five we could have 100 locations in here. We could have 300 locations in here, and it'll work. And speaking of that, if you wanted to add your own, uh, your own locations, all you need to do is go into our locations data service and then add items to this array. So we have all these locations here, and you can just come down here and add, and very simply add your own location. And then all you gotta do is fill out all this data, and then it would pop up right in our app. Uh, the one thing I would be careful of is to make sure your image names, these image names are images that are actually in your assets folder. So remember, these images are actually in our assets folder in our locations folder here. We have all of these images. All right, going back to the app. Uh, so we got this awesome list popping through and we have our next button. And what I love about this, this next animation down here, let's go to this. This is our... Uh, what do we call this? On our locations view, we have our locations preview stack. And this is actually, it's pretty simple code, but it's pretty complex when we think about it. So we created a Z stack, and then we stacked a whole bunch of location preview views on top of each other. So there would be a version of this for every single location. But what we did was we added a little if statement here saying, 
only add this preview view if the current map location is this current location that we're looping on. So that's why we only get one preview view inside the Z stack. Even though it's a Z stack that can support a whole bunch of views, we only have one right here. And then we added this awesome transition to pop in from the left to the right. And these transitions are super powerful. You're going to get used to this as you get into Swift UI. But for example, if we wanted to make the transition, maybe uh, any transition dot scale dot animation dot ease and out. Let's just do that for a second. You guys don't have to do that in your code. But I just want to show you just like how powerful these transitions are because uh, whenever we draw this onto the screen, it's going to do whatever we wanted to do with this transition. So now if we go to the next, we can see this scale effect in between these items, which doesn't look very good, but I just want to show you that like, that one line of code makes a huge impact in our app. Similarly, I could do maybe animate the opacity and we can get yet another uh, animation here. We honestly don't even need animation if we didn't want to, but I really do like this asymmetric animation that we started with. So I'm going to leave that. Just wanted to show you guys uh, how powerful this transition is. And then of course, this locations view with all this complex code that we have written, if we go up to the body of the view, this section here, it's actually super readable because we have a map layer on top of that. We have our content layer here with a header, a spacer and a preview stack. And then we have a sheet at the bottom. So uh, it's really important as you start building out these Swift UI apps that you keep the body easily readable because if you share this with other developers and even for yourself, you want to really be able to understand the hierarchy and the structure for each view. And a way to do that is to obviously separate all of these components into kind of sub variables or functions like we did here. And the last but not least thing is of course, we have this sheet. So in our app, if we click learn more, we have this awesome sheet that pops up, which has uh, images that we can scroll through that look really good. It has some details on this location. It has a link to the Wikipedia, which will automatically open up the Wikipedia on the iPhone. Uh, and then we have a map of exactly where the Pantheon in this case is. And I think it looks really good. I think it's a great UI and I am pretty happy with this overall. Uh, we supported light and dark mode. We supported iPad in uh, portrait and landscape mode, although we are only in portrait mode on the iPhone. And we have this awesome accent color. And if we want to change our accent color to give our app a totally brand new look and feel, all we need to do is go into our assets folder, go to the accent color, click on it, and we can just click on show color panel and then we maybe can make it sea foam green. And I can build and run my app. And the whole look and feel of our app has changed with literally no lines of code. All we did was change that color and now we have this bright green color which uh, maybe doesn't look as good but it is a totally different accent color for our entire app. All right guys, I'm gonna put our accent color back to our red and I'm gonna call this a day. And just to reiterate one more time, this was a beginner level app. So we only did stuff that was covered in the SwiftUI Bootcamp beginner level playlist that I have on my channel. So we did a lot of very beginner level code. We wrote it very well, like professional developers. But again, we didn't do any really complex, overly complex things here. We did a lot of beginner level code, uh, but we had to structure it the right way using frames and alignments to get some really cool effects here. For example, the background on our preview view here, it doesn't go all the way to the top edge where this image is. And we have this awesome UI down here, which I think uh, looks like a really advanced UI, but we did it writing some pretty simple code, which was great. A big thing to point out is that we also did use MVVM architecture yet again. MVVM honestly works perfectly with SwiftUI. We have our model, which is our location and our location conforms to identifiable and equatable. So we made custom IDs for each location and we added some custom logic on how we could set one location equal to another location. And we did that based on the ID as well. So we have our model, then we have our view model. And our view model is basically all of the data behind the scenes for our app. So we have this view model. So all of the data for this screen and all of the other screens is deriving from our view model here. So here's where we store our array of locations, our 
current map location, our current map region. We have variables on whether we want to segue to the sheet or to the uh, show the location list. And we have a bunch of other uh, cool functions in here, such as getting the next location in our array. But one thing I'll point out is that we, on the init of this view model, we have, uh, we're just setting our locations equal to the location data service dot locations. So this is this location's data service here, which has some preloaded locations. So if this app was an actual app with an actual backend, the only difference that we would have in our app is basically instead of loading these locations uh, from a file in our code, we would instead set the locations array equal to a blank array to start. And then we would add some function in here that says maybe like func download locations. And we would just call this from our init. We would say self.download locations. So we would set up a blank array and then we would download locations. And then when we download them, we would just append them to this locations array. And then our entire app would build and work the exact same way because it's all based on this array of locations. Obviously, I'm gonna press undo because we're not gonna do that in this app, but I just wanted to show you guys that we're set up to do that. So we have just our, our default locations baked into this bundle, but we could very easily set up some kind of server and then we download locations as well and not have to change much of our code. So we had, so we did the model, we had the view model, and then of course we had a whole bunch of views. And the cool part about all of these views is that uh, they're all part of the same environment. So when we opened up our app, we created the view model and then we put it into the environment. And then every view that was either part of the locations view or a child of the locations view then had access to the object that was in the environment, which was our view model. And that's why we were able to share our view model across all of those views and everything works so, so seamlessly. I absolutely love it. All right, a lot of me talking, but I hope you guys enjoyed this course. I tried to make it easy yet productive uh, because a lot of the code we wrote here, even though this was a beginner level app, a lot of this stuff is very relevant in advanced level apps because this is still the same way that we create UIs. This is still the same way that we use transitions and animations and view models. So I hope this was a good course for anyone trying to learn MVVM and just get more comfortable with Swift UI. All right, so if you did enjoy it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a like on this video, and maybe even a comment if you really enjoyed it. I love hearing from you guys. I'm very interested to hear if you guys enjoyed this course. Was it too easy? Was it too hard? Let me know in the comments. I'm not really sure. I would love to hear your feedback. All right, thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and you just built a complete map app in SwiftUI.